A lot of his goals are big goals. You know, he wasn't getting a hat-trick, fourth, fifth and sixth goal in a 6-1 win. He was getting the first goal in games and winning 1-0 or getting the equaliser. He scored big goals. You know, I had a good brain. I could see things on a football pitch. I, I, I had good vision. I'd never seen anything like this. Saka and Martinelli were unbelievable. Liverpool didn't qualify for the Champions League and he scored more goals than them put together. Hi, I'm Jeff Stellinger. This is Football's Greatest. Each week I'll be sitting down with a legend to discuss and debate some of the best exponents of the beautiful game. The players that got you off your seat, the hard men that made you wince, and the moments that will stay with you for life. This week, we're going to look at football's greatest imports, and we're in the company of the ex-Arsenal, Aston Villa, Middlesbrough, Portsmouth and England man, Paul Merson. Hi, Merson. Hi, Jeff. And now, look, these are imports, and I know over the years on Soccer Saturday, you struggled with one or two names, didn't you? I mean, that, I'm assuming that Newcastle winger's not in this. What was his name? Alan Saint? Maxim, Max... Maximus, Alan Saint, Alex Saint Maximum, yeah. Alan, See, Alan Saint Maximum, Alan Saint Maximum. Pretty yeah, good. I got that. Pretty now good. I got to get older. The bloke at uh, Liverpool now, <laughs> Shabozley. Yeah, I don't. Know, uh, to be fair, I settle for that. It's a good player. As <laughs> we'll well. all settle for that. <laughs> I tell you, before we look at good imports, I was just thinking about some of the really bad imports we could do and probably will do a show on really bad overseas imports and i'm thinking bruno Cheru, cleberson stefan Givash, adrian mutu marco bugas but actually somebody you played with i think was bosco balaban yeah. at aston villa do you yeah, remember I played him? with him yeah i played with him at villa wow yeah he didn't score a goal for villa that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> to be fair, he struggled, to be fair. He did struggle. He did struggle. I played in a reserve game. He missed an absolute open goal once at West Brom. I mean, he, he couldn't be any more open. Yeah. Yeah. So he was pretty bad, was he? he you know what? Yeah, he struggled. He struggled. The thing was, after that, he went to Club Bruges. And his first season there, he scored 25 in 24. And his second season there, he scored 27 in 30. So he'll be on a podcast over there saying how bad I was at providing <laughs> chances for him. <laughs> to be fair, fair play to him, but yeah, you're only as good as the people you play with. Yeah. <laughs> Look, let's turn from the bad to the good, shall we, and, and talk about your top five imports into the Premier League. And at number five, well, you tell me. I'm going with Kevin De Bruyne at number five. I know he come over here at the start with Chelsea and didn't work out. I thought he struggled at Chelsea, but since then, when he's come back to Man City, he's been absolutely phenomenal. You know, I used to, I, I used to think I had a good brain. I was an intelligent footballer. I could see a pass. I watch him, and I watch the telly, and I think, wow, how did you see that pass? How did you see that pass? He reminds me of Dennis Burkamp, where when you're on the pitch, you know, and it's you're in the middle of it, it's a hundred mile an hour. Him, Dennis Burkamp, you feel like they're playing in a helicopter hovering above everybody else. They see the picture. They see everything. I couldn't talk highly enough of him. He's the go-to man at Man City for all the top players they got. You know, he's their main man, in my opinion. Do you think, and I certainly don't mean this as an insult to him in any way, shape or form, that what he does is the simple things, but he does the simple things better than anybody else. He, he, he does that, but he sees a pass better than anybody else. I don't see anybody in the Premier League who sees a pass like him. I, when he's playing and he does something, I like, how did you even see that pass? How did you even see it? I mean, Harlan just runs now. Harlan will just go. When Kevin De Bruyne's got the ball, he'll just go. It's like Gerard with Torres. You know, they'll just they'll just go because they know they're going to put the ball on a sixpence. Yeah, and, and he does the simple things well. And that's why no one gets near him because he doesn't keep hold of the ball too long. You know, he'll get the ball, he'll pass it on. So people think, well, I'm not going to bother closing him down because what he does, he gets the ball, he passes it on. But then after a couple of minutes or five or ten minutes, that player sits off him five yards and then that's when he starts spraying it around. He's, he's so intelligent. I'm I'm a massive fan of his. I thought when he when they paid that money, a famously on Sky said, he's not worth it. You know, I'd seen him at Chelsea and I thought, no, that's a lot of money. But yeah. 54 million, wasn't he, it? He, 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 he's proved me wrong over the years, 100%. I'm, you know, I'm one of his biggest fans now. Yeah. 
Well, every Manchester City fan will be delighted to hear you say that because, as you say, even now on social media, you, oh. Phil Thompson, and me, we all get stick yep. about saying, why have they paid that much money for him? But at that time, he didn't look anything like the player. Yeah, you know, that, uh, it wasn't a lazy, it wasn't a lazy off the cuff quote. You know, I'd seen him enough times at Chelsea. I'd seen him and it didn't work out for him at Chelsea. It just didn't work out again, times and places. It wasn't the right time for him. And and that's why I said what he said. But wow, what a player. Yeah, that's wow with a capital W. He's yeah. been unbelievable. I think that's how you spill it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only said the capital W. You haven't told me what comes <laughs> <Yeah>. next. <laughs> um, at number four, I'm looking forward to hearing about your number four. Eric Cantona. Uh yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal. Carried Man United. He's talking the, the the biggest club in the world of football, in my opinion, and definitely, most certainly, people would argue with that now, but there was no argument back then. And he carried them, you know, winning games 1-0, scoring goals. You know, you know, the other thing I like him about is when I got done with the drink and the drugs and I'd come out of treatment, I was still banned from playing. And... I was still getting pelters off the papers, banning for life. What he's done is disgrace. And I remember s sitting in bed one night watching Sports Night, and they said, You've got to watch tonight. Something happens. And I was watching it, and he'd done the kung fu kick. And I thought, oh, Thank God for that. And I was never mentioned again. And I was <laughs> back playing within about two more weeks. So I thank him for that as well. But I loved his, his aura. You know, the collars up, he would walk on the pitch, his, his back was straight, especially someone like me who was very shy, very sort of, you know, didn't really always think I should be there. And I always just think, look at him, the way he walks on that pitch. You know, he had his collars up and he, he knew he was good. Mm -hmm. He knew he was good, you know, but then didn't, didn't produce it for France. But, you know, again, probably didn't suit the way he played. But at Man United, he, he made players around him better players. There's yeah. no doubt about that. And, and he, you know, he had a better goal-scoring ratio in the time he was there than Ronaldo did in his time at Manchester United. But I, I just wondered, though, that, that Kung Fu kick, do you think that in any way has sort of marred his reputation when we talk about great players? I hope not. I hope not. I, I, it doesn't with me. It doesn't with me, I, 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 it, what he did on the pitch. And as I, with his record, and you say his record... What will be impressive, and probably not off the top of my head, but I'd be able to say it, but a lot of his goals are big goals. You know, he wasn't getting a hat-trick, getting a full, full fifth and sixth goal in a 6-1 win. He was getting the first goal in games and winning 1-0 or getting the equaliser. He scored big goals. They're the goals I look at. When people go, oh, they scored 200 goals. The go When I look at, at the goals, I look at the first goal in a game, the equaliser, or the goal that takes you in front. They're the goals that count for me. And maybe the next one to finish the game off. But I don't buy into these scoring last kick of the game in a 5-1 defeat. I mean, that shouldn't even go on the record. It should not even go on the record. Nor getting the full fifth and sixth goal in a 6-0 win. The waste of time goals for me. I, you know, for me, I don't count them. Yeah, he got 82 for United and 185. And a lot of those, a lot of those, you were right, were, were big goals. Oh. Were you ever tempted to go into the crowd? Did you ever hear anything that made you think, you know, come on, I'm going to have you? Nah, nah <laughs> no, no, definitely. I wouldn't even come in my head. Do you know what I mean? What he, uh, to be fair, when he'd done it, I was like, thank God. Can you understand sometimes why it happens though? I mean, if I, it, it's, it wasn't by any means the same thing, but remember Eric Dyer going into the crowd at, at Tottenham? You can you can understand. I think it's more more so when you're not playing well yourself. I think when you get frustrated, I think the, you you hear the crowd more when you're not playing well. You know, I played in front of hundred thousand and people go, "What was it like?" And you can't hear the crowd. You can't. It's weird. You know, it's it's weird how it just gets blocked out. But when you're playing badly, you can hear a lot more stuff. So I wouldn't do that. I have shouted at someone, but you know, I've probably shouted at a fan or something like that before. But I, I wouldn't do that. Mm. We could probably include him if we did an episode of Greatest Bargains as well, because he oh, cost wow. one point two million pounds from Leeds. Well, that's you know, my saying that's a cup of tea. That yeah. is a cup of tea. You know, unbelievable how much. You know, you look back now, you think, well, he was at Leeds, wasn't he? You know, people forget he scored a hat trick in the charity shield, in the charity shield. I mean, people just forget about that because you know it wasn't a big game. But yeah, I, I couldn't talk highly enough. I'm a massive fan. 
because when he was at Leeds, he was um, he was in the same squad as Chris Kamara. Can you can you see the bits of Cammy that have rubbed off on him? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't he didn't tackle like Cammy. He might off the pitch, but not on it. Now thanks for watching Football's Greatest on YouTube. But can I ask you please to hit that subscribe button? That way you won't miss any of our future episodes and we have some great guests coming up on the show. So look, Eric Cantner at number four. Um what about your number three? A very, very different type of person, I think. Yeah, I've gone for Zola. I've gone with Zola. I thought Zola, Zola was phenomenal, being a Chelsea fan as well. I thought he was a phenomenal football player. Low centre of gravity, you know, great on the ball, could see a pass. You know, people, when he got the ball, like Poyet and people like that would run off the ball, you know, and, you know, people forget goals, you know, against Man United. You know, Man United were a top team. He walked through about four players like they wasn't even there and put it past Schmeichel. You know, people don't understand how how hard that is when you're playing against top quality players like Man United that day. You know, and his goal, I think I might be wrong. It was, I think it might have been against Norwich with the back heel at the corner at the near post. You know, just a phenomenal player. As I say, low centre of gravity, his touch, his awareness, very classy, very like a gentleman, you know. Not like, you know, some people, you know, look at me, you know, but he was like just a nice bloke, got on with his game. Don't know anybody who would say he was not a good player. You know, everybody's got opinions, you know, everybody's got opinions. People will go, but I very, I don't think too many people will go, oh, Zola, really? He was top draw. Yeah. I've seen him described as artistic and I think that's, that's a pretty good word for him. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say that. I would say that. Everything was done at his pace as well, do you know what I mean? But the low centre of gravity, you, you, the way he glided past people, you couldn't really get tight to him. You're talking about in a in a day and age, he was probably smaller than you. Yeah, he's five foot six. So he's significantly smaller than me. <laughs> is he five foot six? He's five foot six. So he was very, he, you know, he's he's small in a, in an era where big centre halves. You know, if you was a centre half, you were six foot four, six foot three. You know, big centre halves. You know, you could kick down in them days, and he still got by very very easily. You know, I think if you ask people like Poyet and people like that who were top draw runners from midfield, he made a lot of goals as well as scoring goals and. You know, I think at Chelsea, you, you'd put him down as a legend. Could you think of anybody who plays in a similar manner in this day and age? A bit like a, 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 a bit like a silver, a bit like a silver, Bernard Silver, but silver plays sort of out wide. Zola was in the mid, the thick of it, but that kind of play, you know, not the lightning quickest player in the world, very clever up upstairs. And great movement, great low centre of gravity. I keep on going back to that. It's so important. You look at people like like uh, like Messi and people like that. They have that that where they could just go past big players. And I, I would probably say a Silver, similar to that, but obviously Silver's playing out on the on the right at the moment. Do you think he's ever lost his temper, Zola? I can't imagine. I don't, I wouldn't if he was my manager, and he lost his temper. I don't know if I could take him too serious. You know, he just comes across as a very, very nice bloke. And sometimes that's probably why he didn't really succeed as a manager. I think sometimes you have to have that bit of nastiness about you as a manager if you want to be a top, top successful manager. Yeah, he is one of the loveliest men that yeah. I've met. I remember going to Naples to do um, Napoli against Chelsea in the Champions League. And we were going out one evening. And we jumped into a taxi and this is me, Graham Souness, Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher. And the taxi dropped us at the top of this dark alley, which was meant to lead to the restaurant. And we four hard men would not get out of the taxi. We were so afraid of walking down that dark alley. So we didn't get out of the taxi until five foot six, Gianfranco Zola came up the other way and <laughs> took us down to the restaurant. You know? We were really hard men. <laughs> Brilliant. He's a, he's a lovely, lovely man. Yeah. Um, number two, Merce. I've gone for Thierry Henry as number two. Could easy make a case, easy make a case for him to be number one, in my opinion, easily. This player is the only player I've ever seen in the Premier League look like a 20-year-old playing in an under-12s league. I mean, the things he did, the way he went past players, and I mean top players, you know, top defenders, like you, the way the way he turned the Liverpool goal when he turns Carragher and her man. I mean, they're proper players they're top draw players they're not your run of the mill you know Jamie Carragher was one of the best defenders you know he very rarely he took defending as serious as anybody so you ain't getting past him 
unless you're doing something special. And her man was a top player, played for Germany. He was twisting them up. He was twisting their blood up. You know, he put them inside out. I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, you look at a goal against Tottenham. With Ledley King was one of the best defenders about. He just he just left them all. Just left them all. Outside, left foot. You know, I just... Big goals in big games as well. Man United, you know, flicks it up, volley over, over the goalie. You know, he was just... That's my biggest goal. And his pace. And he done it in Europe as well. You know, you see some of the performances at, at Milan and places like that and, and Real Madrid. You know, he, you couldn't, he was unplayable. He was unplayable. Electric pace. Electric play pace. Cool finishing. I didn't think Ian Wright's record would go. You know, right. You know, you're thinking that record stood for a long time and then Wrighty broke it and you think that ain't getting broke. You know, I played with Wright. He was scoring goals for fun. Blew it out the water. Yeah, I just couldn't talk highly enough. I just, everything he did, but his pace, he was the only player I know as well who could run around the outside of players and get inside. Like, he just made people look pretty average, which is some doing. And I'm talking about the players, you know, top draw players, and he made them look very average. And I'm not just, I'm talking about Barcelona against Barcelona and Real Madrid and, and Milan you know, top internationals, and he made them look pretty, pretty, pretty silly. He, he took took a little time to convince people, didn't he? When he first came, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, he was a winger. He was yeah. a winger. You know, he come over, he played on the wing, and then Arsene Wenger, being the great manager he is, thought, you know, I'm going to put this man up front, and you know, and the rest, is, the rest is history. I mean, some, you know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, the back heel he scores at the, at the clock at the North Bank. You know, he had that. He had that pace to get down. He, he was the first one in my opinion as well, really. I might be wrong here. People might say you're talking a load of rubbish here. He was one of the first ones that used to play as a centre forward, but come from into, from out to in. You'd very rarely see him running the channels. You know, he was like, you can't score goals running the channels. So he would come from out and run in and then he would always be in on goal. You see it with Ollie Watkins is doing it now. But before Ollie Watkins was brilliant at running the channels, but, but you don't score goals running the channels. And that's what he he would do, Thierry Henry. And he had that one where he'd come round and he'd bend the ball in the far corner with his right foot. And you knew he was going to do it, but no one could ever stop it. No one could ever stop it. And, you know, class, elegant, yeah, just just a top, top player, yeah. And he, people could easily have the case that he was number one easily, but... When I talk about number two, number one, there is a reason why I've gone with number one. Just with Thierry, eleven million pounds. How much would he be worth today? Can you put a figure on what he would be worth? I. Uh, well, what's the most expensive player? And Pape. Hmm. Yeah. Are we talking? He'd be about two hundred million. When he hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty, he would be that easy. Yeah. Easy. I, I dread to think what he'd do to the defenders now. No one could kick anybody neither. You know, I just don't see how how people would live with him. And it's why you have you could have great debates. We have great debates where who would win, Man City or Arsenal, you know, the Invincible team or or this team or the doubles winning team. I know that when Thierry Henry's in the team, that team's got every chance of beating someone. Yeah. Every chance. Yeah. Everyone in Ireland, of course, disagrees with you, but Yeah, no, I that. agree with that as well. No, I yeah, he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Well, never mind. He's he's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful player and gone on to have a you know great career in TV. Mm -hmm. uh, as well. So your number one must be pretty special then if he's better than Thierry Henry. Who have you gone for number one? Well, I've gone for a player that it was the best player I ever played with by a million miles, and I didn't think a professional footballer could be that good was Dennis Burkamp. He was unbelievable you know I used to I got you know I used to you know I had a good brain I could see things on a football pitch I, I, I had good vision I'd never seen anything like this is it he had eyes in the back of his head his touch was unbelievable he was cool as ice and he had a bit of a streak in him as well oh, did he oh he could look after himself there's no doubt oh he could look after himself you know I was one of them that someone you know he would he would put himself about he could do that he was he had that bit about him but you ask anybody who played with him all the forwards all wanted to play with him you know you talk to Thierry Henry Thierry Henry say Dennis Burkamp. you know Ian Wright Dennis Burkamp. you know you just made a run he would find you he, he just had everything he had 
the shortest backlift I've ever seen on a shot. You know, he could hit a ball from 25, 30 yards and his foot would hardly move. You know, some people have to wind it up and then hit it. He would literally just pull his foot back and bang, he'd hit it. You know, some of the goals, people go, the goal against Leicester, you know, when he gets the hat-trick at Leicester, and people go, oh, we have Matty Elliott. Matty Elliott was a good defender, very good defender, and he does that. And people go, oh, yeah, but it was Leicester and so on. Leicester were a good team in them days. He was a good defender. But then he goes and does it in the World Cup against Argentina in the World Cup. He does it. That's that's what it's about for me. You know, and I only, I've gone with him as number one because – I ain't sure if Henri would have been that great with Burkamp's pace. That's that was my only reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, because when I when I when I look at Henri, you know, you would say he was electric, he was cool at finishing, but his pace got him away from players to get into that position. To you know, he, he wasn't an Ian Wright's goal scorer. You know, Ian Wright was, you know, or a Gary Lineker or Alan Shearer. They were they were centre forward goal scorers. He was. He was someone who was not really going to get 20 goals in the six-yard box. Do you know what I mean? It, that weren't his game. So I ju that was the only reason I've picked Dennis Burkett, you know, thinking if you both give him the same pace, who would be the best? And that's why I've just gone with him. And I hope I'm not, hopefully not disrespecting Thierry Henry because he was unbelievable. But other people will watch this and go, oh, well, you pick two Arsenal players. You know, I've got to pick the second, the number one, because I played with him and he was unbelievable. Yeah. I could have put Yaya Torre in as well in one of them. If we'd have gone to six or it was with him and Kevin De Bruyne, I could have put Yaya Torre in. I thought he was phenomenal as well. I mean, with Bergkamp, obviously, apart from his all-round brilliance, you know, the catalogue of goals, I think the one that a lot of people would always talk about is the goal against Newcastle, which mm -hmm. I think was voted as the greatest ever Premier League goal, and yet there's still a debate about whether he meant it or not. Uh, I've seen that in training enough times. I've seen that in training. And and it's not just a flick, it's the way he holds off the defender. The defender's a big lad, he's a big centre-half, and he brushes him off and then has the coolness to just slide it in the corner. You know, a lot of people there, if you picture, doing that bit of skill would have been so excited that they would have smashed the ball. You know, they would have thought, oh my God, this could be unreal. And they would have hit it as hard as they could and it might have hit the goalkeeper or hit the post. But he was as cool as ice, just rolled it in the corner. I mean, yeah, I couldn't talk highly enough of him, but definitely the best player I ever played with and most intelligent, yeah. And when, I, when you talk about footballers, footballers, a different to players. You have good players, but then you have good footballers. You know, Dennis Burkamp could hit 60 yard balls, you know, spray a ball all over a football pitch. You know, you put something cup in it and say, hit that, have 50 goes and hit that. He'd hit that a lorry load of times. Do you know what I mean? They're different players to like a Haaland who maybe not be able to do that, but will score you a hundred goals in just over two seasons, which you know, no one's ever going to do. I mean, famously, he had just the one flaw in that he didn't like flying. Um, yeah. and, and you can associate with that, can't you? you know? Yeah, so well, I went to see Paul McKenna. I went I went to Paul McKenna's house to, to get hypnotised because I didn't like flying. And I, I I went back and, like, said to Dennis, you know, he said he'll see you. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's helped me. Well, it did help for a while. Uh, <laughs> and he went, no. No, he didn't even bother. Did, did the boys take the mickey out of him at all no, for that? No, 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 no. There was a reason uh, and he just didn't like it. Yeah, no, the lads are all right with it. Yeah. And I think that's maybe the thing that would probably stop him from coming a top, you know, being managing a football team really in this day and age. Yeah, because you've got to be able to... He, drove, got, he drove to some games, He drove he? to some, yeah. but, you know, that was only if they were like in Holland or Belgium or France, a place like that. But if you're going to get drawn away in Greece and places like that... you. It's a no-go. I do hope you're enjoying the show. I just want to tell you that you can follow us at, at Football's Greatest Pod on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. And search for Football's Greatest Pod to find us on X. I just want to... I, it's a wonderful list of five. Um, but I just have to put one or two to you. No Ronaldo. Yeah, I, I did put Ronaldo in because he was a bit younger at the time and I was I was debating. I was going to, I was going to ring up Anthony, the producer, and say... Does Ronaldo count? But I just felt Ronaldo's 
been there since he was a young kid, if you know what I mean. And 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 that's why I probably didn't put Ronaldo in there. No and, Van Persie? No, he went to Man United. <laughs> <laughs> no, Van Persie is a good player, yeah. You know, got some great goals. But I I'm happy with my pick. I think, you know, Yaya Tori would I would say would be unlucky. I, I would say he would be unlucky. I thought for another phenomenal footballer. Ruvan Nistelroy. Yeah, played in an unbelievable football team. Yeah. You know, I, I, an unbelievable goal scorer. Unbelievable goal scorer. You know, got the ball, played it out wide, got in the box, played with gigs. Beckham, Ronaldo, you know, people were going to put the ball in the box for him. Phenomenal goal scorer. Yeah. I just got one more to mention to you. I didn't necessarily expect you to put him in in this list. But do you think in years to come, you know, if we were doing this again, that, that Mo Salah would be a contender to be in there? Yeah, definitely. I think we have short mem You know, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. I think he's one of the best players in the world. I think when in this day and age, when we talk about figures and stats and assists and goals, you got to think last season Arsenal pushed Man City all the way, and if they'd have only if they'd have beat Man City once, they'd have won the league. Saka and Martinelli were unbelievable. Liverpool didn't qualify for the Champions League, and he scored more goals than them put together. That's how good he is. And we're talking about Saka and Martinelli, and that's how good he is. And again, this season he started off to score goals at that. So if yeah. we do this again in a couple oh, of years' yeah. time, he might be in well, there. Well, there'll be another one in there as well. Haaland will be in there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. I'm interested, there's obviously no St. Maximin in there and there was no Diniar Billy Alektinov who... Billy Billy. Uh, no, he's, see, he's an easy one. He's a see what you... Because you he's call him Billy. Yeah, the Billy Elekti. What's his name? Yeah, Billy Elektinov. But you just used to call him Billy. In yeah, the end, yeah. But you? his name is an easy. He, you honestly, this is a Roy Walker. You say what you see. It's an easy. That's it's no silent letters. It's a good one. That one. Right, Diniar Billy Elektinov is an easy pronunciation. Says Paul Merson. Yeah, but if you look, <laughs> Billy Le Yeah, he, honestly, if you read it, you can break it down. I used to break it. I break all my names down. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of Football's Greatest. Thanks very much indeed to Paul Merson. Next time on Football's Greatest. Glenn Hoddle was obviously manager of England. And after one of the training sessions, he pulled me and David over and we did some free kick taking after after training. There was three of us taking the free kicks, me, Glenn and David Beckham. And I just remember stood there thinking, I never thought I'd be taking a free kick with two other people and I'd be the <laughs> one there. <laughs> Thanks for being with us once again. Football's Greatest is a Folding Pocket production with BBC Studios.